shame on me. So, I'm actually on the way to the track now and unfortunately it made the worst rookie mistake ever. Um, I forgot to refuel the car on E85. I had a complete five gallon can over at the garage and you know I, can, I left, I didn't check the fuel and like halfway over here I realized, oh shit, I'm almost on E and the nearest E85 pump is about 46 minutes away. So I made a stop over here at this local uh, Sunoco, one of the service stations and you know, I added at least like $5 of uh, 93 and that should hold me off until the nearest uh, E85 station, but we're about, let's see, I'll say we're about 45 minutes away from Echo, so I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if $5 is actually going to be enough. Yeah. Let's see how it goes. I'll keep you guys posted um, if anything changes. All right, so we made it. Made it 45 miles in with only $5 of gas. Um, I tried going in and out of boost as many times as possible so I can, you know, have less of a diluted mixture on the way over here you know like i said i was just going in and out of boost so that way when i got here there wasn't as much gas in the tank and it would be more e85 but yeah made it about 10 minutes away from the track uh, i started the car and the alcohol readings were above 70 so it looks like we're good to go and now i guess it's just make it to the track and see what the car does. We're good. All right guys, so it looks like we're about like four minutes away. fire jacket so I'm gonna go go ahead and buy one and rent a helmet and then we should be good Turbo. Um, also picked up the my helmet. Now we're just making the line for testing soon. Hopefully we shouldn't be too long.
got some talking to do. Yo, all right, so first pass, shit fucking broke down. I don't know what the fuck. All right, guys, so it's um, it's a sad night. You know, didn't even get to make a full pass. Off the line, car bogged. You know, I tried to give it more gas, and then, you know, I just didn't want to go anywhere. It seemed like it was running out of fuel pressure. Fucking, uh, I'm out of words, honestly. So, um, yeah, halfway down the track, the shit just died out, and now I'm just waiting on the tow. So I tried, I tried, you know, try looking, diagnosing the shit, but uh, came down here with no tow, no tow dolly, no fucking tools. So I'm stranded out here. <laughs> you know, I guess it's just a lesson learned, well learned, and um, next time. Next time I'll be heading out here with at least tools and a tow truck. Like I said, first pass. Didn't even get to make a full pass. Fucking off the line. The car just fell on his face. Straight up fell on his face. And I tried giving it gas and you know it shit didn't want to go anywhere. Halfway through the track, it should have died out. You know, I had to get a, a tow to the parking lot. And, you know, I tried, uh, I attempted to diagnose the problem. Um, but I have, have no tools, like I just said. So, it's gonna be a long night. I'm pretty upset. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of the night. Well, try to enjoy the rest of the night. Just watch some races go on, I guess. What it came down to. Gonna get this tow and start diagnosing tomorrow. What's going on guys so it's the next day and honestly I gotta admit I've been breaking my head over trying to get this car started um, you know yesterday like I said I did the uh, compression test uh, I did a spark test you know it seemed like it was getting spark um, I checked the fuel there was fuel and today I went ahead and stopped at Harbor Freight to pick up this Noid light went ahead and tested the injectors. At first, when I did the test, you know, I didn't see any light flicker, so you know, I went ahead, I went ahead and started uh, checking the wires for continuity. And then I went, I checked the wires from here to this plug right here. And this plug is basically the control switch for the injectors I checked the continuity from there to that plug and it checked out pretty good and then from that plug and to the ECU and it also checked out pretty good 
Um, I even checked for power to the injectors, being that they are ground control um, and it had power. So, you know, my assumption was that the computer was not giving the injectors the ground signal that it needed. Um, so I went ahead and called Cunha over at CLM Motorsports and he told me, uh, well, first he told me that, you know, to double check on the Noid lights because uh, it might not seem like there's a light coming up, but you know, there is. So the whole time, you know, I, I had the, uh, what he was saying about the uh, Noid lights not being able to see them, I just kept replaying in my head because, you know, I checked everything, everything was good and still nothing. So I was like, you know what? Let me double check on the Noid lights. So I went ahead and turned off all the lights and um, I'm gonna insert a clip here of the test so you guys could see that I was getting a ground control switch uh, after all. The next step was, you know, to start the car, but it didn't want to start. So I tried what I doing yesterday. What I did yesterday was uh, to spray some starter fluid. And once again, the car didn't start. So now I'm just like fucking scratching my head. Like, all right, so I sprayed fuel yesterday. It started for a bit, but then it shut right back off. Um, I'm spraying fuel and it's not starting. So it has to be, you know, ignition. So I was like, you know what? Let me pull the uh, distributor cap off. And sure enough, this is what I found. This is actually the screw that goes on to this cap right here. Yeah, so this is the screw that goes onto the cap. Well, not the cap, the rotator. And it's currently off and there's huge chunks of melted, what it seems like melted plastic, all in the distributor cap. I'm gonna go ahead and keep diagnosing and see what else I find. All right guys, so as I suspected, the hole is actually on the opposite side of this hole right here. There it is, there's our problem. That's why I was getting spark and fuel and good compression and it still wasn't uh, starting was because of this rotator. Um, being that this whole little metal piece in the inside got all out of whack um, and it started to spin freely and it threw the ignition off. So there it is. This cost me a pretty penny, let's put it like that. Uh, but yeah, let me see if I could stop by, or at least now that I found the problem, hopefully, which I'm pretty pretty sure this is the, the issue. As you guys can see um, in the inside, all this plastic seems to be melted, uh, being that it was spinning in there and creating friction and heat, thus melting the plastic. All right guys, so I just got back from AutoZone and got the new cap and rotor. So here it is. And as you can see here, I'm just gonna compare it, do a little side by side. You can tell these uh, little pickup probes right here are kind of bent out of shape as well. They're supposed to be straight up like this and they're not so that's another look at that it's all chewed up but yeah just got the new cap and rotor so i'm gonna go ahead and start installing this bad boy and another comparison just so you guys could see this is the new one and this is the old chewed up one so yeah 
And like I said, that little screw hole is basically going to be the guide. It's supposed to be right here. And if that hole is off, uh, being that this little metal piece has a little indentation, and so does, so if this is off, the ignition spark is, you know, it's gonna be off as well. So, yeah, there it is. This little thing cost me a fortune. But you know what? It's just one of those, you know, lessons that you go through and you learn from. You know, that's 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 the only way I'm gonna take it uh, as a learning curve. So let me get this uh, rotor, cabin rotor installed and see if the car starts. So there it is. Went ahead and got the cap and rotor installed and I am going to attempt to start it to see if it runs. So this little shit right here, this little shit right here caused me a tow home from an hour and 45 minutes away. I had to call the tow truck to get my car towed from Akko, New Jersey, which is in South New Jersey, all the way up to North New Jersey, which is about an hour and 45 minutes away. So I'll let you guys guess how much that tow cost me. Thanks to this little guy over here. So, you know, I might be going coil on plug very soon because I'm not trying to deal with this again. But yeah, car is running. And I guess, let me turn the car off. So I guess um, for now, just gonna end the video here. I'll let you guys know. Most likely, I don't wanna speak too soon, but if not this Tuesday, then the next, I will be heading over to Akko again for a test and tune and finally see what this car is capable of in the quarter mile. I'm gonna end this video here. A memory card is about to run out, so. See you guys in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment in order to enter your chance to win the NRG Steering Wheel and Crippolis Hub. Peace out.